Yeah, spring, spring or uh, fall 2019 as well. That's awesome. We got that success story there. I love it. Awesome. <laughs> um, very, very cool. All right. Well, um, y'all, we're going to go ahead and actually get started um, because I believe we started live here on Facebook. So good evening, everybody. And thank you for joining us tonight. Um, this is the official second in our Cards Insider series. Um, and it is all about reaching new heights with academic tutoring um, and our REACH Services Center in the Student Success Center. Um, we are really excited to have you all here tonight. Um, we are streaming live via Facebook. So this event will be available after the presentation is over. So if you ever want to come back to the resources we talked about tonight, maybe hear some of those great answers from our students or anything like that, um, you are more than welcome to do so um, by accessing the video after the, the event ends. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Kevin Buckley. I am an admissions counselor at the University of Louisville. Um, I've worked with students from all over the state of Kentucky. So we were talking about that earlier. So I've probably seen some of y'all on the road. Um, maybe I've met some of y'all in person. It's nice to see you again here um, if I've seen you before. Um, the cool thing about all that we offer at the University of Louisville, especially with admissions, is that if you have questions, you have your own personal admissions counselor there for you as well. So um, after this presentation is over, if you thought of a question, maybe, you know, 10 o'clock tonight, you're like, oh, I have to get that answer. No worries. You can use our Find Your Counselor feature on our website to reach out to your admissions counselor. We can definitely get that answer for you. But tonight, we are joined by a few special guests, and we are really excited to have them here to talk all about REACH and what REACH is, our tutoring services, and how that relates to student, student success here at the University of Louisville. So we are joined by Dr. Jeff Bailey. Um, Dr. Bailey is the Executive Director for REACH Services at the University of Louisville. And we also have two student guests, and I'll let them introduce themselves in just a moment. Before we talk about them, though, before we introduce everybody, I do just want to mention, tonight is all about REACH, and that is what we're trying to focus on, everything about REACH and all the great things that they offer. So if you have questions about something else, maybe it's about, you know, our pivot to fall, our plan for the fall with the pandemic going, all that good stuff, I totally understand there are probably going to be a ton of questions about that. Don't worry. We have an event just like this next week on July 8th um, for you to talk with our Dean of Students and our Provost to talk all about that plan. So if you have questions that aren't related to REACH, don't worry. You can always ask those at our next Facebook Live or you can always email your admissions counselor. But we're going to try to keep tonight just about REACH and all that the great things that they offer. Um, you should see uh, when you're watching on Facebook Live somewhere in the comment section, the ability for you to ask us questions. So we're hoping tonight it's going to be super interactive for you to ask questions to Dr. Bailey, to all of our students. So anything you all want to know about, let us know. We will answer those questions for sure. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it over. Um, I introduced Dr. Bailey. He'll get a chance to introduce himself again in a moment and talk all about what REACH has to offer. But my two students, do you want to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit more about you? Sure. My name is Sophia Orth, and this fall I'll be a sophomore as a mathematics major in the actuarial science track. And for REACH, I tutor Accounting 201 and 202, and I absolutely love doing it, so happy to be here. Hi, my name is Mirage Patel, and I am a finance major. I'll be a junior this fall at U of L's. Awesome. Very, very cool. We are so excited to have you all here today. And Dr. Bailey, I'll give you a chance to introduce yourself, but after you introduce yourself, do you want to maybe tell us a little bit about what REACH is, what you all do, what the purpose of REACH is at the University of Louisville? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, I, as Kevin said, I'm Jeff Bailey. I'm the executive director here at REACH. I'm a newbie. Um, I've only been here. I'm starting my seventh year, so by U of L terms, that's pretty new but I, I'm in my 27th year uh, of working in higher education. Uh, and 20 years of that, 19, 20 years have been working in learning center environments and running different services. Um, so a little bit about REACH and what we do. Uh, REACH stands for Resources for Academic Achievement. I'm just gonna call it REACH, it's so much easier. And essentially what we do is we offer various academic support to students particularly as they're coming into the university to help them adjust and acclimate to the academic rigor of the school. So we offer free tutoring services hosted by peer mentors and peer tutors, I should say, um, like Sophia and Mirage. We also offer a number of different courses that help students um, who are struggling with some of their college readiness, particularly in mathematics and reading. We have a number of summer programs that we're launching. In fact, two of them start up next week our math accelerator program, 
and our calculus preview program, both of which are designed to help students who want to get a foothold, a foot up on their mathematics, uh, either as an arts and sciences student or, or as an engineering student, get ready for the fall semester. Uh, we have lots of self-help tools, a number of different workshops that you can take advantage of when you're a student here, and all of those services are free of charge. You know, and I think the biggest thing I want to convey is that the time that you spend participating in our services, no matter what they are, tutoring, workshops, courses, all make a difference in not only your academic uh, adjustment to college, but your self-confidence and your ability to perform better. Real quickly, students who use tutoring services um, on average have a 3.0 GPA with us. Students who don't only have a 2.5. That's a pretty dramatic difference, especially if you know you want to be able to not only earn good grades, but uh, be able to qualify for coveted internships or co-ops, keep scholarships, or get new scholarships. So we really play a role in helping you acquire those skill sets and that knowledge that are going to make you more self-sufficient, more confident in your studies, and walk away with knowledge that you know goes beyond just passing a test. Awesome. Very, very cool. So now you all have got the brief overview of REACH, um, what they do, what they have to offer. Um, so go ahead, ask us the questions that you have, whether it's for Dr. Bailey or for our students. Um, We're all here to answer for you and help you know a little bit more about what REACH does. Um, so you go ahead and use that, that session or that comments feature, excuse me, on this session. Um, as we're going through tonight. We do have some questions, um, which is good. It's awesome. We started out strong with some questions. So I'll start with this first one and whoever wants to take it can take it. What kinds of courses does REACH have tutoring for? Is it only specific courses or is it any course? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, basically, we cover a wide array of 100 and 200 level courses ranging from anything in arts and sciences uh, through STEM classes, engineering, you name it. There are a few areas that we don't cover, uh, primarily because there's support elsewhere. For example, we don't cover English classes because we have a university writing center that provides that level of support. There are communication studies classes that are supported by our university speaking center, uh, so we don't cover those. But in general, a lot of the 100 and 200 level classes are things we cover, and we do offer some support in 300 level classes, particularly in the sciences uh, and engineering. Awesome. And my students, do you all um, maybe want to talk about what you have done in the past, like what, what, what you may have gone to reach for or what you yourself are a peer tutor for? So I'm a peer tutor for the beginning level accounting courses, which a lot of business majors and minors have to take. Um, I took it because I took accounting to a one and to a two because I am a finance minor. Uh, and it was also required for my major in the actuarial science track. So that's part of our uh, computer resource center that we have an extra library for the business courses. And then personally, I've taken advantage of the math resource center um, with calculus last semester. And it's an amazing resource where you can just walk in get help from math tutors um, whenever you need to they're open a lot of hours and it was a, an amazing help for me so I've used a few of the reach centers as well <clears throat> I've used the LRC which is the learning resource center the um, CRC the computer the CRC and then the uh, the MRC as well for help with math courses like um, college algebra, economics, anthropology, and CIS, so computer information systems. Awesome, so it sounds like a wide variety of courses that are offered and available and that students are taking advantage of, which is pretty unique and pretty awesome. We do have a question um, from Kathy. And Kathy, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, Kathy wants to know, is there a cost associated with the summer readiness courses and I guess it'd be, I think Dr. Bailey, you've mentioned this already, but it's good to reemphasize, is there a cost with any REACH program that we offer? Yeah, that's a great question. So our primary services are free of charge. The two summer programs that I mentioned, the calculus preview program for engineering students, uh, and these are incoming engineering students, so, so I definitely wanna clarify that. Um, that's designed to reinforce a lot of the uh, algebra skills that students um, you know, took when they were in high school that feed into the first month, month and a half of their engineering uh, one uh, math class. So they're reviewing essentially advanced algebra skills in prep for um, the fall semester. 
there is a $50 fee for that class. Uh, it's all online uh, and we do synchronous sessions. That means live. And we also have um, the ability for students to interact um, offline with our instructors. Um, there is a, I, I want to say it's $120, $125 fee for the software itself, which is a, a software code you purchase through the bookstore. All of that information is on our website. If you go to reach.louisville.edu, you can select summer programs up in the top bar and you'll be able to see the summer information about calculus preview. The math accelerator program, uh, I'm really pleased to uh, say that we offer that free of charge for students. It is also an online program. Normally we meet in person for that, uh, but due to COVID, we're doing that all online. Uh, it will be synchronous <clears throat> and they'll have uh, opportunities to do work offline as well. Uh, but thanks to partnerships and sponsors, uh, particularly uh, UPS and Commonwealth Credit Union, we're able to offer that to uh, incoming students free of charge. And that's typically designed and geared for students whose college readiness scores based on like ACT uh, were below, below what they call the college readiness um, scale. So if you scored uh, 19 or below on your ACT subscore in math, you might wanna take advantage of that program, particularly since it is free and it helps you prepare for uh, all of the fall semester classes you take with us. The other major benefit uh, for that program is that you can actually complete anywhere from half to the entire Gen 103 class that we offer free of charge, no tuition costs, no penalty against your financial aid award, simply by taking that summer program. Uh, and we can give you um, half to full college credit for that. That's incredible. And that is, I mean, a huge discount of for what tuition costs and what uh, the credit per hour cost is. So that's incredible. That's awesome. Very cool. Um, we did have a clarification question um, from Sharon. Sharon, thank you for joining us. And um, Dr. Bailey, I know you mentioned this a little bit, but just to reiterate, um, she was asking, are these face-to-face -face or online? So the summer programs would be online, correct? Especially this summer. Calculus preview program has always been online. Uh, we haven't offered it in person in about six, seven years now. Um, but that's primarily because student demand was for an online access, uh, particularly as students were holding down summer jobs. Um, we're continuing that in the age of COVID and Math Accelerator is online as well. There's only one other program that we um, play an instructional role in, and that's called the Brown Foreman Engineering Academy. Brown Foreman is the sponsor for the engineering program, and we help with math instruction in preparation for uh, the first engineering uh, math class that students will take. Um, that is designed um, very specifically. They work with 29 incoming freshmen. Uh, those freshmen were already accepted and chosen uh, specifically for the program. There's an application process that's unique to that program. Gotcha. Now, Sharon might maybe wondering about what um, it, like the tutoring services are going to look like in the fall with everything going on with COVID. And I know you had a little bit of experience with that this spring with everything moving mostly online um, for the spring. So do you all have any idea of what things might look like or is it is it a possibility that tutoring could be offered online? Yeah, in fact, we're going to host uh, right now our tutoring sessions, um, both online and in person. That's the game plan going forward, at least at this point in time. Um, I'll give you a quick kind of synopsis about the types of tutoring we offer, uh, and then I'll let Sophia or, or Mirage, you know, add anything that I might be missing. Um, so as an example, we provide normally drop-in tutoring services for a number of different types of courses. Uh, when those are done in person in some of our satellite locations and even in our main center uh, here at REACH in the Belknap Academic Building, um, you can come in for math tutoring, uh, computer science, uh, computer information systems, things like that, without scheduling an appointment. You just come in during normal operating hours. Um, all of those hours are posted on our website, so I won't belabor <laughs> what those are right here. Um, but we also have scheduled tutoring appointments, and uh, Mirage mentioned that a few minutes ago. That's uh, through our Learning Resource Center, and that's where you're committing to a weekly uh, hour work, uh, session um, you know, throughout the entire semester. Uh, if you decide that you're doing well uh, halfway through the semester and you don't want to continue, you could always drop it. But we offer it free of charge and you keep, you know, up through the end of the semester if you need it. Um, we also offer large group tutoring for um, historically challenging courses, particularly in, in the sciences. Um, and we call that peer assisted learning. Uh, now, normally that's going to meet in person, but due to COVID, we're probably going to host most of those online. 
also due to COVID, uh, which, you know, Kevin knows, um, you know, we'll have restrictions on the number of people we can get into any one of our centers. As a result, we'll do any appointments that we need to online when we hit our max capacity during a given point in time during the day. Sophia Mirage, do you want to add anything about, add anything about uh, your experiences in tutoring and, and what students might expect um, from the interactions? What do we expect from students as they come into a tutoring situation? Um, so for students coming into a tutoring appointment, I would say <clears throat> make sure you bring your textbook with you. Um, kind of make sure you review your class notes from the previous session or two. Kind of know your material. Um, come prepared with lots of questions. And just really be willing to learn and kind of um, take notes on what the tutor is saying and like help you prepare, prepare for tests and exams and whatnot. Um, my experience as a tutor has kind of differed from Mirage's a little bit because I do schedule tutoring with accounting 201 and 202. And so with, um, you know, students come week to week at the same time every single week for an hour uh, to meet with me for the scheduled tutoring sessions. And so for those sessions, I would say it's really important to have gone to class and read the book, like Mirage said, to have your notes ready and have specific questions so that our time during that week can be, you know, really purposefully used um, and you can get the most out of the sessions as you come to them. Um, I think that's probably it. Now, uh, one question again for our students to keep you all um, on your toes a little bit thinking about, you know, what you all have been doing. Um, what in your experience as tutor, has tutoring only been for those who are completely lost in the class or can you go to tutoring or have you worked with students have gone to tutoring? Who maybe just don't get one concept like one key concept but they get everything else um, or is it just for people who are totally lost they have no clue what they're doing i had a wide range of students this past semester um, i had a few students who they came in later in the semester and they might have taken an online course which are more difficult in terms of lectures and everything and they kind of felt at much more of a loss than some other students um, and in that case it's absolutely like come in as soon as possible when you whenever you start to kind of feel uneasy about a course go ahead come in talk with somebody and you can always cancel like we said but it's good to be you know just get a jump start as soon as possible and other students though they came in they really had a good understanding about most of the concepts um one of my students would just come in with a few questions each week and then we would kind of look over her assignments and make sure she knew everything that she was going to do with that but she had a really good grasp on the on the concepts but she also did a very good job of making sure that she could put the concept into her own words and then i could either verify like yes that is an absolutely correct interpretation or let's maybe alter that a little bit it. But I had students who had completely different levels of understanding and that's perfectly okay because students who are struggling come and students who aren't as much but just need some, you know, kind of reinforcement of the material come as well. So I actually tutor in the Emporium Math Lab. So we have both um, the general math courses 103 and 104. So with that, I'd have students who are both lost and kind of like just need a little bit of guidance. So with that, what I did was I went through some example problems, kind of like guided them a little bit to the point where they could actually practice a few on their own. And if they got stuck, uh, me and the other tutors and instructors would be there to kind of like help guide them back on the right track. Gotcha. So you know, one of the things that's probably um, has been most uh, amazing to me is that we have a culture that supports students no matter what part of the learning spectrum they're on. Um, on average, the last four years, at least 78% of the freshman class has used our services for tutoring. I mean, that's remarkable. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you're, you'd be coming into a situation where, you know, people aren't going to judge you. We're going to accept, you know, where you're at, no matter what, um, help you figure out, you know, what the course concept is all about, help you achieve your own goals, not our goals, your goals academically. Um, and, you know, just build that confidence level. Like I said earlier, you know, we want to make this something that you feel positive about and that you feel confident going into assignments, tests, final exams, things like that. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like from what you all are saying, it might not just be those students who are trying to get from a D to a C. 
It could be those who are trying to get from a B to an A. Um, and really that it's available for everyone that way. Um, and it sounds Absolutely. like, especially with what you were saying with the freshman class, like it's the exception not to go to offer, you know, to what reach offers, um, not the exception to go, which is an incredible, incredible thing for sure. Right. Um, I mean, okay. we have our top students using our services, honor students, Grawmeyer scholars, Brown fellows. People know that the, you know, the, the services that we offer work. Um, and these are strategies that are based on proven research. Uh, we use a lot of the things from psychology that Dr. Ross probably talked about last week. Um, we actually train our tutors on a number of different things, mindfulness, communication strategies, space retrieval and how memory works. And they're able to infuse a lot of the, that knowledge into the actual tutoring sessions and help students acquire not just the content knowledge, but better skill sets, how they can you know, study uh, better, more effectively, budget their time more effectively, and just, again, feel more confident in what they're learning. That's awesome. So in just a few more minutes, I'll ask you all, um, especially my students, a few more questions about your experiences. But we do have some questions via Facebook. And again, thank you all to everyone who is watching tonight via Facebook. Definitely feel free. Any questions you have about REACH services, about what REACH does, um, and how it's benefiting students, feel free to ask in the comment section. Um, we do have some questions and um, Dr. Bailey, these might be especially good for you. Um, so with one question is from Lisa. Um, she said she missed the beginning, so it might be something you had mentioned, but once you get accepted into the engineering program, do you get sent info automatically about the summer programs or is it just specific students? So uh, all engineering students should receive emails about um, our services and our summer programs uh, that has been going out through email and through Slate. Um, so if students are checking uh, their messages, they should see some information about the upcoming programs that start next week, in particular, our calculus preview program that begins next Monday, July 6th. There's still plenty of time to register. Um, you can do so online through our website. Awesome. And I know I, you, some of y'all, if you're going into business or pre-business or anything like that, you might've gotten an email from me. I'm a huge proponent of that calculus program, any of the summer programs that reach offers, but especially because business is so math heavy, it's so important to be able to grasp those concepts and be able to do that early. So it's a great program for anyone who might be going into the business field or any field that requires calculus. Um, we have another question um, from uh, Kathy, or no, sorry, excuse me, from Yvonne. Um, Yvonne wants to know, is Brown Foreman, the engineering program, is it enough to get ready for freshman calculus, or do you recommend taking summer readiness courses as well? I think that depends really on the individual student um, and what their confidence level is like. Uh, for many of our students, especially high achieving students who are coming into U of L, they may have taken algebra back in their freshman year of high school. And so I think sometimes we find that students have uh, rusty skill sets and they think they know the algebra, but it's been a while since they've practiced that. And the program is designed to help bolster their confidence level and ensure that they actually do have the skill sets that are going to make them um, successful in that first engineering math class. For Brown Foreman in particular, um, since there is an application process and those students have already been selected, um, there are only 29 uh, specific spots. Um, that may not meet you know, the demand that's out there. And that's why the calculus preview program exists. That serves the entire rest of the incoming uh, engineering class. Um, unfortunately, at this point, uh, we don't um, have uh, the curriculum set up right now for uh, business students to participate, which Kevin mentioned. Um, but our services in general support business students, whether they're coming through accounting, econ, or finance uh, as they enter into their freshman year. Awesome. Very, very cool. And another reminder for everyone watching tonight, feel free to comment uh, any questions you have below. Um, but also remember that we will be posting this um, to our YouTube page as well. Um, and this will always be available on our Facebook, the UFL Admissions Facebook page. So if you missed the beginning or you have any you know, questions you want to go back to um, after this event is over, you're more than welcome to um, find the video via our Facebook or via the YouTube page. Now I want to turn to our students and to get a little bit more about what your experience was like, um, you know, as a tutor or what students should expect if they're going into tutoring. So can you talk a little bit more, you know, is it once weekly? Is it three hours long? Or, you know, what does a typical tutoring session look like for, for someone who wants to get tutoring help? 
Sure. So for scheduled tutoring like I have, it's um, I would meet with a student for one hour a week every single week at the same time. So it stayed really consistent for their schedule and everything. Um, and then they would kind of just prepare for those sessions and we would work together. And scheduling or scheduled tutoring can also have one to five students. So it becomes kind of small group. However, my students were really spread out um, and it just happened to be that it was one on one every single session, which is an amazing resource to take advantage of. Uh, with the drop-in session though and tutoring um, with stuff like the MRC, the Math Resource Center, those students can come in and take advantage of all of the hours if they wanted to, which is a ridiculous amount of time, but if they wanted to, they could absolutely have um, access to tutors that entire time. Um, so for me, with <clears throat> when I tutored in the important math lab for the general math courses 103 and 104, it was like, it was twice a week for students courses. So either Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday. So students would come in, um, they would sit at um, a computer, they would work on their math. And then as they had questions, they would raise their hands, ask for help. We kind of, me and the other tutors and instructors would help them um, check their homework, make sure they're ready for a test. And then when they were, we would sign off on it, give the password and like, to kind of test their knowledge to see how they're doing in the course. Awesome. And what is the commitment level like for students who want to do tutoring? If they sign up for an appointment, do they, like if halfway through the year, they feel okay with what they're learning, can they stop or is it a commitment for the entire semester? They are perfectly free to stop um, and then they could always start back up again. But it's entirely up to the students of when they want to start. You can sign up at any point in the semester. There's no deadline or anything. Um, and you can continue as long as you would like, which is through the end of the semester at the latest. Um, but it's completely up to you how, when you want to come. Yeah, like Sophia said, you can sign up anytime. But I'd recommend once you sign up, stick, um, stick with your appointments because you never know when you might need help again. And if you've dropped your spot, that's possible someone else could take that spot and you might be scrambling for another time or date that might may or may not work best for you. So once you sign up, I'd recommend sticking with it just in case you have questions or help they might need along the way. Yeah. Also, I think that courses in general get harder as they go along. And so even if you feel OK, you know, you might be doing OK about like a, cer a certain section, but then you might get to another section where you're struggling a little bit more. And again, it's much easier to just continue with, you know, the same tutor versus trying to sign up and find a new time and everything. Um, and then also, even if you are feeling OK, I think it's great to still go and practice with a tutor or like I said, one of my students put things into her own words and verified, you know, that that is the correct interpretation and everything like that. And it's a great way to review and your tutor can do customized quizzes with you and everything and help you come up with practice exams and, uh, you know, work with you on ways to study. So I think that there's always something that you can work on a tutor with. And Sophia, you kind of jumped into what my next question is going to be. So I love it. But one thing I think people think a lot is, oh, if I do tutoring, my tutor's just gonna give me the answer so I can pass the class and be good to go. Is that how it works? Or what do you actually do to help students learn the material? It's really recommended that there's an agreement between tutors and students that um, is established at the beginning of our sessions together. And we, the tutors are not supposed to be in place of a lecture and we really want you to go to class. We want you to read the book and we're not supposed to be in place of a teacher um, or explain all of the concepts to you for the first time. Uh, we're really more there as supplemental uh, support for you know help with studying or help with specific questions that you have. Um, and just make sure and it really helps when students come in and they know exactly what they have questions for. Because if you don't, if you're not really prepared or you come in and you really just want like a broad overview, then there will be questions that you come up with later on. And but you use your tutoring session up on, you know, the, the stuff that you could have studied on your own. So it helps to come in with specific questions and have your tutor help you with certain things and understanding um, and really establish a deep understanding rather than having them trying to reiterate a lecture. Yeah, so especially in math courses, I find it's easier to do like example problems because numbers can be changed. So it's easier to do example problems without really like giving the answer. So it's like, try this problem, I'm gonna help you with it, but then do another problem to make sure you actually understand it mm -hmm. and if the struggle with it we can always like go back and figure out 
what they're struggling with or like where we might need to improve upon. Awesome. Well, Dr. Bailey, to start with, I'll start with this question for you. And then maybe if my, my students, maybe if you want to talk about what your process being getting into tutoring was like, but I guess one question we get a lot is how do I know that my tutor actually knows what they're talking about? How do I know that they are going to be the ones who can help me out? So what does that process look like? How do you find tutors? So we do a lot of different things in terms of recruiting qualified tutors. Um, the other piece that's kind of tied in with that for us is that we have an internationally certified tutor training curriculum. Wow. And in order to become a tutor, you have to meet several qualifications. So one of which is that you have to have at least a 3.0 cumulative GPA. You have to have a B or higher in the class that you want to tutor in. And you have to have faculty recommendations. Um, you know, one of the challenges that you know, somebody like me would have, I mean, it's been, you know, 30 years since I was in college. I can't judge somebody's, uh, you know, preparedness uh, in, you know, biology, you know, 240. So one of the things that we rely on uh, is our faculty partners to tell us how the students have done and whether or not their content knowledge has prepared them to become a peer tutor. And again, we're not talking about having them be experts or what Sophia said, you know, to replace the faculty member. It's meant to be a supplement. Um, and these are high achieving students who simply want to give back. Um, and we rely on our faculty to give us those recommendations. We put them through a rigorous screening process. And then again, you know, we're going to spend a significant amount of time and uh, energy investing in their success by training them. Um, we cover uh, 10 hours of training each semester they're employed with us. And that ranges from communication strategies and active learning pedagogies through things like mindset. Uh, or spaced retrieval, communication, uh, you know, delays, things that are going to help a, a tutor try to figure out um, how to um, work with a student more effectively uh, and help them achieve their own success and become independent learners. You know, my staff laugh at me, but I tell them this every semester. We're not here to create dependency. We want to put ourselves out of a job. And that's a goal that we strive for on a, on a daily and a weekly basis. Now, for my students, what was your process like? How did you decide that you were wanting to do tutoring or, or what really drove you to wanting to help other students? I'll be honest, I, it had never occurred to me to be a tutor until I remember exactly where I was when I got the email on my phone from the um, director of the Learning Resource Center. And she was telling me that my accounting 201 professor had recommended me as a potential tutor. And so Julie was asking me if I would like to be a tutor for that course. And I got really excited about it because I've always enjoyed, you know, helping other people you know, like achieve their goals. And that's one of the big things that you do with tutoring. And now that I am a tutor, I love it because, you know, working with students is amazing and being able to be there with them while they have, you know, their moments where they finally get it. And we've all been there. We felt it, you know, but it's great to actually help another student get there and see them, you know, feel better about themselves and feel more confident about the course when they get there. And so I'm so glad that I was asked um, because here I am and I love it. <laughs> well, for me, I was actually sent a few emails from Rex about like, you've taken this course, you should consider tutoring. And then I was like, some of these courses I haven't taken. So I was like, I wonder if I can tutor in math. So then I reached out to Keith, who's one of the um, hiring managers for um, tutors, for the math tutoring. So I reached out to him and then I got the tutoring position. I really just enjoyed it because I really like algebra and just like helping other students. So I was like, algebra is kind of something I enjoy. So I was like, why not like, help other students with it and like have a job on campus as well. Absolutely. That's awesome. I love hearing those journeys. Well, again, everyone, keep asking us what questions you have. I know you all, whether you're a parent or an incoming student or maybe someone who is just starting to look at colleges. You want to know more about what the University of Louisville does to help its students. Um, we are here for you tonight to go over everything you want to know about, about REACH tutoring services. So feel free to drop a, drop a question in the comment section. Um, let us know what you want to know about so we can definitely chat about it. We have the director of REACH services and two students students who have done some tutoring themselves, um, which is fantastic. So lots of different ways to answer your questions, get the administrative side of things, and also the student experience and things as well. Um, now, I do just want to kind of go over, um, you know, we've heard a lot about this not supposed to be a replacement for a professor, not supposed to be a replacement for class. And sometimes students can get confused between what the differences are between 
reach tutoring and office hours with professors. So does anyone have any like maybe some differences or what you think the benefits of each are individually um, that might help maybe students who want to do both? Through a hard one at you. <laughs> Sophia Mirage, why don't you take that? I guess I think with that is like tutors are there to like help you and kind of like be that bridge for like between you and the professor. But if you have specific question for like a, cer a certain class, definitely go to the professor's office hours because some tutors may not know the necessarily the answer to it. So I think tutors are mainly there's like a supplemental guide to like kind of like help you understand certain concepts, but they're not there to like say like they might not have always always have all the answers to your questions. I think that reach tutors are a great resource for students because it's intimidating to reach out to professors, um, especially about like individual things. And so reach tutors are a great, a great resource for ongoing help in a course. And, you know, I'm stuck on this problem or I don't really understand what this means. Um, while professors, I think are the best way to prepare yourself for a course individually. So reach tutors aren't necessarily, um, didn't necessarily have the same professor that you will be taking. Um, they may, they might have, and it may be likely, but they didn't necessarily have the same exact experience or they might not have been tested on a certain thing or they might not know how best uh, you specifically to prepare for your professor's exam. And so I think that, you know, with my professors, it's, they're the best resource for, you know, what exactly should I look at in the book in terms of exercises to prepare myself for the exam? And your tutor is not necessarily going to know that. They're, they might help you with how to go about those exercises, but your professor is going to be the expert on how you can best achieve in his or her class. Awesome. I think it's also just important to note, you know, for our professors go out of their way to make sure they are very um, accommodating for student schedules, but professors are busy people and sometimes they're just not available outside their office hours. Reach is available not 24 seven, but almost like it's available day in night for our students. So a lot of times, you know, you might not be able to go to too many office hours, but you can always use reach if you need it, which is I think one of the best parts about having that free center for our students um, who just maybe not be able to get into his contact as much with their professor as they need to outside of the classroom. So um, I think that's another key difference I would note. Um, so awesome. Again, everyone keep asking us those questions that you have um, and let us know what you want to know more about in the comments section. Um, and this might be a bit of a more personal question, but I will just open it up. Have any of my students, have you all used REACH before? Like even outside of being a tutor, have you ever used REACH for a class or known people who have used REACH for a class? I have used the Math Resource Center. I haven't used scheduled tutoring, but the Math Resource Center was immensely helpful for me because I was in the situation where I had um, algebra earlier on in my high school career. And then my last year of high school, I took AP statistics. So when I got into calculus, I was like, wow, this is, I don't remember this stuff. And so the Math Resource Center helped a lot and that, you know, I could go and I could just, the great thing about the Math Resource Center as well, uh, that we haven't really mentioned yet is that you can just go in and you can work on your homework and you can if you have a question great then there's somebody there to help you but there would be days where i walked in and i worked on my stuff and i was like okay i understand this and then i left but other times you know it would be like every other question like i kind of need some help with this um so that was kind of my experience with it and it was extremely helpful because reach at the math resource centers are open the majority of the day i think this past semester was like nine to seven except for fridays and so i was able to go after class as a commuter and you know have plenty of time to spend with them to knock out my homework before i went home um so yeah the drop-in tutoring really helped me yeah so i've used drop-in tutoring at the mrc as well when I took college algebra that I went um, there about two to four times a week and they really just helped me get, get through my material and like do really well in tests and quizzes so like tutoring that really helped me get like a really good grade in that class. I used scheduled tutoring which is really good as well. I've used it for microeconomic or macroeconomics, um, anthropology, CIS which is computer information systems and then once or twice for accounting. Awesome. 
So what I'm hearing and what I think is amazing is that sometimes it's the tutors who need some tutoring as well. It's the tutors who need help from their peers. So it's anyone can be using the tutoring or the, the tutoring offered by REACH, which is an incredible thing to hear, I think. It's awesome. Um, I think great students are going to use, you know, as many resources as they can. And REACH is one of those resources. So, you know, no matter where you are in a class, it's, it's always beneficial to go to REACH. Yeah, another good thing is sometimes learning from a professor can be intimidating. So sometimes like kind of that peer-to-peer -peer connection can really like help ease stress or like anxiety. So it's like, as you talk to your friends, you talk to a tutor and just like not feel as if worried and they can explain that sometimes at a certain level as well. That's awesome. I think that there's, you know, it's kind of intimidating to go to tutoring sometimes as well, because as you know, you all mentioned earlier, it's like, oh, I don't want to have to need tutoring, you know, like, but I mean, I mean, everybody has strengths and weaknesses and I did really, really well at accounting, but it took me a little bit to get, you know, concepts and calculus down. So if you need to go to tutoring for this, I mean, you could probably tutor someone in something else, but if you need help for that, then get help for it. Yeah. It's there, it's free, it's a low stress environment. It's just there to help you and that is it. And I think that sounds like an incredible place. Like you said, Sophia, you should use it if it's there and it is, and it's there, it's free, it's awesome. Now you, um, want to use, now you want to use tutoring, right, Kevin? <laughs> yes, now I want to use tutoring, exactly. <laughs> um, Dr. Bailey, you said you've been here for about seven years. Um, what have you seen at, at UofL that maybe has been changing over the past few years? Are more students? I know you said a lot of freshmen are utilizing um, the REACH Center. Are more students doing that each year? Or, um, you know, how are things changing on campus since you've been here? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the biggest changes has been easily within the last six months, and that's, you know, moving a lot of our services online. Typically, we are serving about 5,000 or so unique students on an annual basis. Uh, that's a large number of people that all see the value and the benefit of coming in and receiving that type of academic support. I always used to say, you know, I'm of that generation uh, that, um, you know, we used to in college pay our friends beer or pizza money in the hopes they knew what they were doing. We didn't have tutoring services then. You know, you had to rely on friends and hope that they knew what they were, you know, doing in, in the class. They weren't trained. And you fast forward to this generation, and we have learning centers across the you know, nation that are geared towards providing these kinds of support services and REACH is probably one of the top you know, programs in the nation. We've won numerous awards and our tutors have won numerous awards for the you know, excellence that they've you know, provided uh, here on campus. Uh, it's not to toot our own horns, it's just more of a reflection of the caliber of our program and how far we've come in terms of developing tutoring as kind of a, a science more than anything else and making sure that we provide services that make a difference in students' lives and how they perform academically at the university. Um, you know, we've uh, actually you know, had one major success uh, that we've seen uh, replicated for the last two years, and that's the Gen 103 and 104 classes that Mirage mentioned, uh, where we're helping students who are coming in struggling with some of their math skills. Uh, we've actually closed the achievement gap. African-American students and white students both pass at the same rate. They pass at about a 73.5% rate. Uh, students who don't pass our classes, it's not because they don't get the math. It's because they didn't show up for class. It was that simple. And I think we find that pattern in general at UofL and in college in general. If students don't attend class, they're not going to do well. They think in sometimes in a large class in particular, they can hide. And that's not the approach you want to take. Um, you know, we want to make sure that, as you know, our tutors have already mentioned, they're coming to class, they're taking advantage of all the resources, whether it's REACH or somebody else, you know, leveraging their uh, faculty members' office hours. Those are the kinds of skills and behaviors that are going to make them successful. That's awesome. And I do want to highlight, as a higher education professional, that achievement gap and closing that achievement gap is something that is unheard of at most institutions. That is, it really does speak volumes. And so, if you take nothing else, if you don't want to listen to anything else we say today, know that it is not just us saying how great REACH is. It is outside organizations. It is data. That just speaks volumes about um, the programs being run here. That's incredible. Um, we have about, about seven more minutes, and we're going to wrap up around 7.50. Um, so if you all have some more questions, again, in the audience that you're watching, you want to know a little bit more about what we're doing, or some last-minute questions for um, Dr. Bailey or our students, we are here for you. We're happy to answer those for you. So go ahead and drop those questions in the comments. Um, I do want to turn a little bit um, and ask a little bit more general advice for our students who might be coming in this fall 
Um, they ended their high school careers taking online classes. Uh, for some of them, it worked great. For some of them, it didn't work so well. Um, and they are going into a situation where, you know, the majority, the bulk of their class will be in person, but there might be some hybrid in there. There's going to be some hybrid in there. Um, maybe some classes are fully online. What are some advice for, from you all um, for students coming in this fall, for incoming freshmen, um, about what they should prepare for, what they should look for, what they should do, both just in general at UofL, but also to prepare for these online classes? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. I think, you know, kind of broad picture, they want to budget their time very carefully and not assume that an online class is going to be easier um, simply because it's not meeting as frequently or it's not meeting, you know, live. Um, you know, one of the things that people oftentimes make the mistake of is they think they can go back and watch a recorded lecture and understand all the content. And that's not always the case. So we want to make sure that students are really thoughtful about structuring their study time in addition to uh, actually participating in that online session, whether it's recorded or it's live uh, that the faculty member is offering. We actually posted a number of different tips this semester and into the summer uh, on our uh, website that helps students think about uh, what they're doing in terms of their academic behaviors in an online environment. Uh, and those tip sheets are easily accessible makes it um, you know, something that they'd wanna be able to you know, turn to as a resource um, before they actually start their fall semester worth of courses. Um, Sophia, Mirage, what else would you add? Um, for online classes, I'd definitely say like, make sure you do manage your time wisely because even though it doesn't meet at a certain time, it will still move on a lot quicker if you don't pay attention, like manage your time wisely. Some assignments are posted weekly, um, so make sure you like, you keep up with those and like read your material because with the online classes, there are lectures, but it's not as much um, interaction as per se in a classroom. So you do miss that interaction part, but with that, you have more flexibility, but I, honestly, I prefer in-person learning just because I feel like I learn more with the prof professor physically being there, like classmates asking questions in person, like group activities and whatnot. Uh, my experience this past spring was much better when I started, you know, having a structure that Jeff talked about where I kept a schedule where, you know, I got up and I would work on school until a certain time or I got a certain amount done and I wrote out a to do list every day and I was like, these are the things that are due today or I need to work on because they're due later or I need to study and I would stay until I got that to do list done and that's what really helped me because right now I'm in two online classes and I'm also working, but my work schedule changes week to week. So it's been much more difficult for me to keep a schedule and I've just been having to you know, keep things, um, fit things in where I can, but it still is very helpful for me to have a to-do list and everything and just make sure I have a clear idea of what's due when and what all I have to do. Uh, but as Mirage was saying, yes, the lectures are much less. Um, and they're, they're, they're shorter, so they don't cover as much. For example, with my math class this past year, uh, when we went online, I went from, you know, my professor filled up hour and 15 minute classes, and then I would have like 20 something minute lectures. And that was basically a whole bunch of examples just being taken away. And so it got to be a lot more difficult, but again, the MRC was open online, so that helped. Um, but it does, online does take some discipline, but with, you know, keeping a structure, you know, taking advantage of resources like REACH um, and keeping track of everything that's due and, you know, just as giving yourself time and saying, you know, I'm going to go to the library now, or I'm going to, um, you know, work on studying from here to here and taking breaks, like setting a timer and saying, you know, I'm going to take a break after 30 minutes of reading. Um, because then that helps you from getting bored at your desk after working on online classes a lot. So those are my tips. That's awesome. And I know one, I'll throw a piece of advice in there as well. We've talked a lot about staying on schedule, being prepared. And I think one thing I do want to mention with everything going on, hopefully you all know this, it is also important to be flexible because all of us are going through this crazy time this new stuff together. And so things we talk about today might be different a week from now, maybe even tomorrow afternoon for all we know. So we are all going through it together. Classes are going through it together. I think one thing 
and you know, Sophia Mirage, and even Dr. Bailey, you can correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I think it has been incredible to see how everyone at UofL has worked together as a community to really try to make it as best of an experience as we possibly can while going through literally unprecedented times. And so um, stay with us, you know, stick, stick with us. Everyone's trying to do things the best that they can um, and things will be as great as we possibly can make them in the fall for sure, no matter what it looks like. And I'm sure it's gonna look different than normal, but we'll get you as close to normal as we definitely possibly can. Um, we do have a question from Kathy. So hold on one second while I um, follow up. So Kathy, thank you for joining us. She's the parent of an incoming freshman. She wants to know, does REACH follow up with students once they signed up or is it totally initiated by the student? I guess she means like after you sign up, what is that contact like? Yeah, so it kind of depends on the service that you're talking about. So let's take scheduled tutoring because that's the most common one where we have to follow up with a student. Uh, so for a particular subject matter that um, we actually do scheduled appointments for, the student is going to um, either fill out uh, an online request for tutoring. Uh, they could potentially come in, walk into our center, and um, we would assist them uh, immediately with scheduling that appointment. Uh, or they could call in uh, any of those three ways. So we try to meet students where they're at. And in those situations, particularly if they fill out the web form, our staff are reviewing those on a daily basis and working towards fulfilling their assignments as they come in. Um, typically, we have you know a, a 48 uh, hour, 48 business hour turnaround time. That first part of the semester, when we're getting slammed with requests, it may be a couple of extra days, but we're getting people connected pretty quickly. Um, if they haven't heard something back in about three or four days, we always encourage students to follow up with us just to make sure there wasn't any technical glitch that everything came through, that we had your contact information. We've had situations with that where a student puts their name down, but doesn't give any contact information. And if they have a common name, that's a little challenging. So we always encourage follow up, um, be self-reliant um, because this is a partnership. We wanna help you, but we also need you to help us in the process. Yeah, great question, Kathy. I can tell you personal experience, the people over at Reach from the students to the staff are the nicest people in the world. So they will not bite your hand. If nope. you follow up with them or have a question, they'll be happy to help you out for sure. Um, well, that kind of is gonna end where we are tonight. So I wanna thank everyone for joining us tonight Again, for our second in the Cardinal Insider series, we we'll talked about all about reach tonight. Again, this video was recorded. It'll be available on our Facebook page, the UofL Admissions Facebook page, and on our YouTube channel as well. So you can use either of those. If you have any questions that you want to follow up with, feel more than free to reach out to your admissions counselor. If you have questions about REACH, you can always reach out to REACH directly. They'd be happy to talk with you for sure. Um, we'll be happy to get every question that you have answered. Absolutely. Um, a few quick notes from things coming all, coming up. Um, again, next Wednesday, um, July 8th, we are having our Pivot to Fall Facebook Live. It'll look pretty similar to this. We will have um, Provost Bain and the Dean of Students as well um, on to talk about what our fall semester is going to look like, why it's going to look that way, and answer any questions from incoming parents or incoming students or parents of incoming students that you all might have. If you are a student who is an incoming freshman, you should also have received an email um, about small groups for your orientation. Make sure to look at your U of L email for that. That is required for all incoming students. And you definitely um, don't want to miss that. It's the most amazing time for sure. Um, again, I thank you all for joining us. Um, thank you for asking questions tonight. Um, I'm going to have us end with a nice little L's up and say go cards. So on the count of three, we'll all put our L's up. Uh, one, two, three. Go cards. Go cards. cards. <laughs> have a great night.